produces something called a, a chilled water system. And the chilled water system has a chiller, and the water is being circulated through the building, and over there we have cooling towers and pumps. For all intents and purposes, the, the theory behind the operation of a large machine like that and a small air conditioner like this, it's exactly the same. It's all a matter of perspective. So for the first class, we'll be talking about the cycle, we'll talk about heat and pressure. As I said earlier, everything in this business is about heat and pressure. You have to know how to be able to take pressure readings, how to take temperature readings. The refrigerants are great because they allow us to create heating and cooling, but they're bad because they're bad for the atmosphere. I spoke earlier about the EPA 608 certification license. That is the only license that is required to get into the field. There's no refrigerant in this system right now, but if I come along and I take this line and I disconnect this, if there were refrigerant in there, the refrigerant would come out. And the refrigerant is bad for the atmosphere. It's bad for the people in the room, right? So we need to be very careful in the way that we handle the refrigerant. And there are many, many different types of refrigerants. So when you go to the different machines, you need to be able to say, this machine has this refrigerant, that machine has that refrigerant. There's going to be safety requirements, gloves, goggles, different things like that. We're going to talk about the different safety requirements. Then there's going to be leak testing. Does anybody know what this is? Now, one person in this room knows what this is? That is nitrogen. So we use nitrogen to leak test systems. If I come along and I set this system up and I, I finish you know, setting everything up and I put the refrigerant in and it's leaking, what is gonna happen? The refrigerant is gonna leak out, right? And now I have violated the law. Does anybody know what this is? It's a multimeter because we can use it to measure amps and volts and ohms and continuity. If this was live and I touched this and he came along and he tried to grab me to pull it off, now we create a circuit and he's going to get hurt. So it goes beyond just protecting myself. I need to protect the people that I'm working with as well. Whether or not you can give me the dictionary definition of what a volt or amp is, I don't care. I care that before I touch that equipment, I tell you to give me that reading, you're telling me whether that circuit is live so I don't hurt myself. This is a flared fitting. It's a mechanical fitting. But then we're also going to do welded fittings. What is this? That's a torch. Guess what we're going to be doing? We're going to learn how to use a torch. It's called brazing. We're going to braze with this. There's another one where we're going to be soldering. I don't know if we'll do it in the church. Maybe we'll do it outside. But uh, there's 100,000 people with the EPA license, and they don't all know how to brace. So if you know how to take electrical readings, and you know how to solder, and you know how to braze, that gives you an advantage over the competition. The heat pump class is where we start dealing specifically with this. How many people have seen something like this? Okay, a lot of people, it's becoming very popular. You didn't see this like five years ago, right? Well, guess what? This is just mounted. There are many different types of mounts based upon the type of head that we are installing indoors. How many times have you seen something like this on the outside of a building? That is the outdoor piece that connects to that indoor piece. We have done jobs where just to put a hole in a wall to run the lines in took us four or five hours. Heat pump installations are construction jobs. That box right there weighed over 158 pounds. You can't see it in this picture. We are 15 feet in the air. You see the skinny little brackets? You always see the skinny little brackets that hold the thing up? So you got to drill those things into the brick wall. You got to lift this thing up and hang it up there and then hope the thing doesn't fall over. Remember in the EPA class where we talked about we have two classes on piping. One we're going to be doing flaring. The other we're going to be doing the, uh, the brazing. Why? Because depending on the size of the lines, I might have to brace or I might have to flare or I might have to bend pipe or cut pipe or thread pipe. There's all these different things that you have to know how to do. This line right here is a condensate line. Anybody know what condensate means? It's basically water. It's water. Condensate is water. You condense moisture out of the air. It's water. So when you run the system in air conditioning or cooling mode, you're going to produce a lot of water, like a gallon of water every minute. This is an outside box. 
This is a disconnect box. We gotta learn how to set all that stuff up. There's another cable that goes from here called a whip. That goes from here, that goes to there. Then we gotta run another cable that goes back around there. So remember in the EPA, when we were learning how to use the multimeter? Well, guess what? When we're doing these jobs and we're up 15 feet in the air, guess where we're taking these readings at? Pressure testing. What did we say we were using earlier to pressure test? Anybody remember? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. So that's why we do it in the EPA, because if I want to make sure this system isn't leaking after I set up my lines, I got a pressure test. Evacuation. Now, the word evacuation means we're removing air because, moisture. well, air and moisture, yes. So when I set these lines up, they have air inside of them. I don't want the air to mix with the refrigerant because then that's bad for the machine and it's bad for the atmosphere. If the system needs refrigerant, then we might charge from a tank like this. After we set everything up, we're actually gonna start the machines and see if the machines will run properly. And the very last thing that we're gonna do is recover. Now recovery means I'm gonna take that machine over there and I'm gonna use that machine to remove the refrigerant to put in the tank. Because if the machine is broken, I can't fix it with the refrigerant in the machine. I need to recover before I can fix it. So we're gonna do everything that as a service professional getting started, you're gonna need to know how to do. But anything more after that, you can learn on the job. The most important thing is to get the job. If I say, Femi, give me a gauge manifold. He has a gauge manifold, right? If I say, Femi, you know where the leak detector is? Femi, give me a temperature gun. That's it. Because if he picks up the wrong thing, then I gotta walk over there. We just did a job with a seven story walk up. I gotta go up seven flights of stairs. I don't wanna do that. The person that's gonna hire you, they don't wanna do that. They're not expecting you to know everything. I always tell people, as an employer, I pay people for two reasons either make me money or save me trouble. <laughs> That, that's it. In the very beginning, you're going to save them trouble. You'll probably be a gopher. You know, get me the nitrogen tank. Get me the acetylene tank. Get me this. Get me that. But as you get more skills, then you get your own truck. Then I don't need you, you know, shadowing me. You can go out and make me money. Because now I'm in one place. You're in another place. We're making double the money. That's what the companies want. So if your goal is to make as much money as possible, well, guess what? You can do it in this field, but you got to get a job.